اخي صبرا على نم الفراق I would like to pass you on to somebody who needs little introduction and that is because his case has been in the media almost every week in one form or another in terms of what has happened with this country what the british intelligence services got up to in the cases of people of whom they should have had some concern and care but instead were being complicit in their torture abuse and false imprisonment we are in the blessed month of ramadan and during ramadan it is difficult to imagine when we're soon going to be coming to the point of iftar and breaking our fast how those people held in bagram and guantanamo will be uh, dealing with this and how they will be meeting ramadan in solitary confinement cells not knowing often whether the time for fast has come or even gone not being able to pray in congregation like many of you will be at the time of the fast and in the evening all of those things that you take for granted none of them are available in guantanamo and yet the strength perseverance and fortitude of these men is exemplary and one of those men inshallah is binyam muhammad who will speak to you about ramadan in guantanamo Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu salam ala Rasulullah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaykum um, I hadn't prepared any speech because I was just going to come and say Assalamu alaykum and just go and sit down but um, I just want to I decided to speak for a while just to say something which I think um, uh, it's like a duty upon me to say I think um, we have to understand that helping the people who are incarcerated, whether it's in Guantanamo or Bagram or whatever place they are in, should not be considered as kind of a help we're giving them, like we're handing them, we're giving them a hand, because <laughs> it's actually it's an obligation upon us. Is something that we have to do. Whether it's Islamically or non-Islamically, it's an obligation. Muslims are going to be asked about their brothers and sisters who are incarcerated. And we have to have an answer of are we actually doing something as just a help, you know, I want to feel good, so I'm just going to put 10 pounds, and then that's it, like, when somebody wants to feel good, goes out and does shopping, and then they feel good about it. Or are they doing their job, which is an obligation? And I hadn't thought about this, because I was thinking, you know, I'm out, and let me help the people. But then, as I'm sitting down and watching the chakras, sons over here, and I can't even sit down and... I mean, I, I can't even talk, talk to them because I don't know what to say. I mean, I mean, what can you say to them? There's, I mean, you're, you're out here and their father is inside. And over what? I mean, like Ahmed has said, this thing does not make sense. People cannot be just held for seven, eight years on accounts of suspicion or because they're suspected. That's, that's not a you know, good example. That's not good enough of a reason to hold people for seven, eight years. And the other thing I just wanted to talk about was that, I mean, as my brother's in Guantanamo right now, I know what, what is happening. I mean, the best that they're gonna have is they're gonna be like three or four of them sitting down in one of the cages making like having iftar and the worst is awaiting a, a, an earth team which is an emergency force uh, emergency team emergency reaction force. yeah the emergency reaction force which is just going to go into the cell for for the reason of him having trash which he didn't want to give it, give up i mean it's that simple you have five people come into your cell and beat you up because you refuse to give them trash. 
it's a joke, but that's what's happening right now. And us brothers are laughing because they've been through it. I mean, we were held in Guantanamo not because of any suspicion. People have to understand that that institution over there is just there for exploitation. They used every single tactic they can think of to break us, train their guards. I mean, most of the policies that you see happening around the world, they're coming from places like Guantanamo, Bagram, just experiments they go through and then whatever works, they implement it outside, whatever doesn't work, they don't. But obviously, people will not understand that because they haven't been in that situation and they haven't experienced it. Um, I was really going to say, but I was really happy that the, um, at, at the end that there was a Guantanamo Justice Center which was established. And the reason why I'm saying this is because as one of the lawyers here was Ahmed, as soon as that was established, the brothers in Guantanamo were so happy that they said, at last there's something. Now they're looking up upon the people outside as not just help for them to be released, but also to help them once they're released. So I'm pretty much sure there's a lot of people here who can do more than just give money. There is something you can do that will help the brothers and sisters in Guantanamo or other places. But it's just you have to find out what it is. Everybody here has something to do. There's something, there's something you have to offer. And you just have to look inside you and see. I mean, it's really sad, I mean, for me to stand up here and say, you know, we will, this happened to us or this happened to us. And, but the truth is, yes, some of us were affected by our experiences. But some others, they benefited. And I mean, they got, the experience that they gathered from Guantanamo and other places have set them in a life where they can actually help through this experience that they went through. Um, I think it's of a really important note that this is the first time that Binyam has spoken in public ever to a public audience. So you, inshallah, this evening have been very privileged to hear from him.